everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this Christmas bauble cat collar that you can see Melba wearing here. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this Christmas bauble cat scarf, um, if you're making it like me, you'll need three different colours. And I've got this acrylic metallic blend in it's the same yarn just in three different colors uh christmasy colors you can you know you this could be fine for a non-christmas project as well if you want to make it in three colors fine you can make it in one color you can make it in six colors you can make it in uh three colors you know lots of opportunity for you to make this your own so like i said i'm using these three here this is probably about a two weight and it's kind of I don't know it's if you can see it's it's an acrylic and it's kind of this string like look and it works up really nicely into this pattern so uh, you can use any yarn that you like but I would recommend that you stay around the finer weight yarns you'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn I'm using three and a half today three and a half millimeters that is you need some scissors to snip off your ends. You'll need a darning and or sewing needle. So I've got this one here. It's actually got quite a sharp point, this one. So it's more kind of for sewing, but um, you know, I'll use that um, for my weaving in. Now, I'm gonna give you two options for how you can uh, secure this, this collar. You can either make it a button up. So you'll need a button if you're doing a button up. Or you can make ties. So I'll give you that option when we get to that portion. And you'll need a tape measure to get a general idea of your cat's neck circumference. Now in the description box below, I'll add a general guide to standard cat sizing. If your cat is outside those standard sizes, you'll need to have an idea of your cat's neck circumference. But it's a good idea to, to have that anyway. But otherwise you can use the guide and follow along with that. Okay, so the stitches and techniques that you'll need to know to make this collar, uh, how to slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to single crochet, how to double crochet, how to make these puff stitches, which I will um, run through with you. But if you need to check any other resource just to um, get a more in-depth tutorial about the puff stitch, uh, then please do that. There's heaps on, on YouTube. I don't run through it super slowly, but um, yeah, I do, I do demonstrate that stitch. Um, from there, you'll need to know how to, um, yeah, really weaving in ends how to change colors if you're making a multicolor version like this one or you could make a single color version like this one okay and then you've got the option of adding ties or sewing on a button so that's up to you um yeah so it's definitely beginner friendly and uh, it just makes this beautiful christmas collar or if you're not um at you know it's not Christmas time and you want to make, just make this collar anyway it's very cute just in a single color or you can use you know not Christmassy colors and and um, I've used three here but you could you know you could use a different color for each each row even and it would be as beautiful bright colored collar so there's lots of leeway in the creativity for this one so I hope you enjoy it and let's get started okay so take your first color whatever that is going to be now, here's one that I've made previously. I've just made this one in one color. So it's the same yarn, but it's just in a, in a white, sort of a creamy white. So where we're starting is this one here around this. This is our foundation chain, our first, first our starting point, okay? So when you're choosing your color, just bear in mind that you'll probably want it to be the same color as the ties. Okay, now you could do different color for the ties if you're making ties. If you're using a button, it doesn't apply. But if you want this to be, you know, if, if you want the ties to be the same color as this first row, then, you know, just factor that into your choice, okay, of how you um, set your colors. So, you know, it's entirely up to you how you want your colors to, to be. So I'm going to use this green and I'll, it will continue for the ties. So you're going to slip knot onto your hook and then 
You're going to make a chain to the length you need for your cat's neck circumference plus a little bit extra depending on how you want it to fit. Okay so this one here is I'm going to make the same again for Melba. So this one Melba's neck circumference is about 24 centimeters and then to that I added about one to two centimeters. I think it was closer to two centimeters. So I'm going to chain to her neck circumference 24 centimeters plus I'm going to add about two centimeters so I'm probably going to go to about 26 centimeters okay for this neck circumference. I don't want it to sit tight on her neck I want it to sit sort of just at her chest like this okay so you'll do the same now just make sure you're counting your chains so I've got one two three four five and you want to end up on an even number okay so six seven eight nine ten and if it's about the same as what I chained for this one I'll be I'll be running close to about 50 chains okay but you'll you'll probably have a different hook size or you may have a different hook size you'll have probably different yarn so you'll tailor that to your cat size your yarn size and your hook size okay so for me it's going to be around 50 chains I think so I've got 10 there I'm going to continue on with my chain and I'll meet you once I've done that Okay, so I've done 50 chains there, and I'll just get my tape measure to check. Let's see. Yeah, I might just go a little bit extra, actually. Let's just add another one, two, three, and four, just keeping it at an even number. So you'll make all of this calculation yourself yeah that's going to be pretty close that's about 26 centimeters okay so now we're going to work our first row and our first row is just a simple single crochet row so skip that first chain and in the second chain you're going to place a single crochet and then you're going to do that in each chain all the way along to finish off row one okay so I'm going to do that off camera and you do the same finish off your row one one single crochet into each chain and I'll meet you once I've done mine okay so there's my row one done just one single crochet in each chain so now we're going to change to our second color now of course if you're just using one color you'll continue on but if you're changing color then come with me now I change color in just a really simple way if you've got a method of doing it then you just do it your own way but I just place my yarn over the hook like so and then I pull up a loop and I chain one and then I tighten the ends now at this point you can snip your first color end and then I will chain oops, it's just a bit tight <laughs> then I will chain three plus an extra one so one two three so that's a chain for a double crochet so that counts as a double crochet and then I chain an extra one okay and once again you might just have to tighten your your ends a little bit before moving on and then we'll turn now we're doing a V stitch so if you know what a V stitch is it's two double crochets or in this case it's two double crochets separated by a chain one in the same stitch okay so our chain will count as our first double crochet in this stitch then we've got chain one which we've already done We'll yarn over and we'll place a second double crochet into that first stitch. Okay, so our chain counts as that as one stitch, chain one, and then a second double crochet. So this is just a a simple V stitch. Now to continue on, we're going to skip that next stitch, and then we're going to place a double crochet in the following stitch. Chain one and then a double crochet back into that same stitch okay so that's just a V stitch for obvious reasons and we're going to continue that same pattern all the way along so skipping one 
double crochet, chain one, and then double crochet back into that same stitch to create your V. So you're just getting these little, little V shapes. So you're going to continue along doing that all the way to the end. So I'm going to do the same and I'll meet you at the end of this row too. Okay, so I'm just placing my last V stitch into the last stitch in my previous row. And that's row two completed. Okay, so we're going to move on to row three. And if you're changing color, then you'll do that. So I'm going to change color. My third color is going to be my red. So I'll just do the same as I did before. Just tighten those ends. And I'll cut off my tail end on my second color. Okay, so now we're going to chain three. And then turning our work, and in between each, or in this chain space of each V stitch, we're going to place a puff stitch. Okay, so yarning over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up another loop. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up another loop. And yarn over, insert your hook, pull up another loop. Okay, and then we're going to yarn over again and pull through which can be sometimes a little bit tricky, pull through all the loops. Chain one. So we've got these little baubles. Okay. And then we're going to move along to the next V-stitch. Yarn over, insert the hook, pull up a loop, one. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, two. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, three. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, four. And then Yarn over and pull through all the loops to create your next puff stitch and chain one just to both seal the bauble and also move along to the next stitch. So you're going to do that all the way along. So let's just do it one more time together. Yarning over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. So just make sure these loops are kind of loose, okay? Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over. Pull up a loop and then one more time yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through all your loops chain one okay so you're going to do that create these baubles all the way along one in each of those chain spaces for each V stitch until you get to the end and I'll meet you at the end okay so I've got my last puff stitch to do here so I'm just going to do that last one two three and four so last one chain one now to finish this one off we're just going to because if you look at the beginning of your of your row you've got this chain here which counts as a double crochet so we're just going to double crochet into this last chain as well so find that third chain in the chain from the previous row and do a double crochet in that chain now that's row three the puff stitch bauble row now we're just going to repeat this process so we're going to do another row of single crochet another row of v stitch and then a, another row of um, baubles so you can decide to stop here or at least stop at this next row so probably what you want to do is continue on to this fourth row, which is the next row of single crochet. So I'm going to change back to my, my green. So if you want to change again, you can. So change your color. I'll just snip off my red there. And chain one and turn oops sorry for working off camera there chain one and turn so I'll just tighten those again 
and then you're just going to so in each so in between each puff stitch and in the top of each puff stitch you're going to work a single crochet okay so single crochet in that first in that first double crochet there and then you're going to work into this top of the puff stitch single crochet and then into the chain space between the puff stitches into that the top of the puff stitch and then into the space between the puff stitches okay so you're going to work that all the way along just a single crochet all the way to the end and then you're going to place a single crochet over in this end as well okay so you want to still have an uh, odd number of stitches okay so for the next V stitch row so I'll meet you when we get down here and I'll show you what to do but in the meantime just continue with that single crochet all the way to the end of this row and I'll meet you when I'm there so actually just to show you if you're a little bit confused about where to place this this stitch on the top of the puff stitch it tends to be just to the the front edge of the of the puff stitch okay so you just work in there and then into that space in between them so hopefully that makes sense and I'll meet you at the end okay I'm just at the end of my row here so I'm just placing my single crochet at the top of that last puff stitch and then I'm working into that chain as I said before so work into the third chain on the top there okay so now like I said you can stop here if you want to oh I've just got a loose bit of metallic so you can stop here if you want to if you want a finer um, a finer collar if you wanted to do a second row of single crochet to finish off to make it kind of symmetrical with this first row then you could certainly do that but we're going to move on and make our next row of V stitches so actually just to give you an idea with the yarn that I'm using and the hook size I'm using just how wide the finished version comes out to be it's about five centimeters okay that's with my my yarn and hook size so just to give you an idea but I'm going to move on and continue changing color so just changing my color again there so you're just going to repeat these I'm going to let you move on and repeat these next two rows just on your own um, if you need to go back and check anything then then please do so oh whoops <laughs> okay that didn't work I've cut the wrong end okay let's do that again oh, these things happen okay so yarn over and make it. I meant to cut the green not the gold there we go okay so we're chaining our four three and four which is our one double crochet plus one chain I'll just tighten these off again and then I'm going to do exactly the same as I did for my v-stitch row before skip that stitch double crochet chain one and then double crochet back into the same stitch so I'm going to finish these next two rows so this next V row and the next my final bauble row and I'll meet you once I've finished those two rows okay so there I've finished my my uh, V row and my bauble row puff stitch row so I'm going to finish this off so you can finish wherever you like if you want to finish here you can definitely do that what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to finish off with a border at this edge as well I'm going to see what it looks like I'm going to do one row of single crochets like this one here and then I'll probably go for a second row as well I'll just see how it looks so I'll just change color back to my green and slip off so it's my red cut my red 
and chain one so you know you get to finish this off how you want to finish it off you could stop at that at that last row or you can go ahead and do finish you know make a finishing border like I'm going to do let's see how that yeah I'm going to be much more happy with that I think that's going to be look really nice and symmetrical and I'll probably go for two rows so it's about the same width as this this beginning area here so I'm going to go ahead and finish those last two rows and then we'll talk about how we can um, finish this off and how you know whether you want to use ties to secure it or whether you're keen or on a button it's up to you but I'll, I'll show you I'm going to make ties again because I, I really like the ties I like adding the little um, the little bauble at the end of the ties as well so um, you know you can you can decide that for yourself so I'm going to continue on and finish these last two rows and you you do the same and I'll see you shortly so just to mention something that I didn't mention before, what I did on this, this previous one is I actually, in my very last row, I actually put two single crochets in the first and last stitches. So I'm going to do that again. And why I'm doing that little increase there is it just to give it, um, so it just gives it that little bit of extra sort of collar shape. Okay, so it just pulls this out a little bit and it just gives it that kind of, um, nice shape of a collar so I'm going to do like I said I'm going to do that again so I've just put my two single crochets in that first stitch and then I'm going to continue along so this is my final row here I'm just going to do one single crochet all the way along and then I'm going to place two single crochets in this last stitch just to make it um, symmetrical so I'll see you at the end of this last row okay so I'm at the end of that last row and I'm just going to yarn over pull through pull out a tail not quite that big there we go okay so what we're going to do now is if you've um, if you haven't changed color and you're just doing one color you won't need to do this step but now we're just going to do some weaving in of the ends so what I do is I so where I've changed color I just tie a simple double knot just to secure those better and I go down the line and I do that between each of the, the pairs of tails and then I'm going to go ahead and weave in these tail ends and then we'll talk about the adding the button or the ties depending on what you prefer so I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and I'll meet you shortly now I actually just want to insert a little note here um, I'm not going to do it but I'm just going to give you the option if you want to so I'm just at the point where I'm weaving in these ends but if you want to and um, it depends on the look that you want you can add the border along this edge as well so you could add a single crochet border along this edge as well now I'm not going to or at least I'm going to weave in my ends and I'm going to see how it looks without that border I'm actually I actually don't think I want that border I think it's going to be too much for the look that I'm going for so I'm just going to leave this this edge kind of raw but if you prefer to tidy it up a little bit you can add your color so your you could tie on again if you've already tied off but you could add a, a row of single crochets or even two rows of single crochets along this edge okay and that would also help you work in your tail ends but I I actually don't think I want to do that so you go ahead and do that if you want to it's just just an option um, you know I just wanted to throw that in there so I'm going to continue weaving in my ends and actually let's just do one on on camera so obviously you're going to weave the you know the right color into the right color so the corresponding colors and you'll just have to you know do your best to tidy tidy this edge up a little bit especially if you're not adding that extra that extra border if you've only got one color you probably you know you won't need to unless unless you want to so I've got quite a sharp needle here let's 
just get that through. I'm always fighting with these needles on camera. I don't know why, That's it's much easier off camera. Okay, so I'm just going to weave the gold into the gold and obviously weave the other colours into each other as well. So you'll just weave, you know, preferably into the back, whatever you've chosen for the back. And you'll just kind of try and tidy up each of the each of the ends there. So my red will go into my red and so when I pull that red tight you can see that it's a nice it's a pretty nice tidy edge there. Okay? So you go ahead and finish off your weaving and I'll meet you I'll meet you shortly. Okay, so there's my ends all woven in. So now whether you're adding a button or a tie, you'll still you'll take your your choice of yarn that you're going to use and probably you want it to be the same as your first color and you're going to tie on at the corner there. So you're either going to use this to make a tie or make a button. Okay? So but, uh, sorry, a button hole. So if you're making a buttonhole, you'll chain to the length you need for your button. It'll probably be only like be like two to three chains. And then you'll slip stitch just at the base there. Okay, and that will be your I'm I'm not doing buttons, so I'm not gonna actually finish it. So that you'll chain to the length that you need for your button. So you know, it, it, if you're using a larger button, you might need a larger chain. If you're making a smaller, you know, smaller button, smaller chain. So then what you would do is you would sew your button onto the other side, and then you've got your little button. So if I was going to do a button, I would just put that one. Oops, let's see if we can. Mine would just go like that, okay? So, but I'm not going to do a button. I'm going to do the ties. So that's your choice. So just, I'm gonna actually move that a little bit down further. So just tie on as you have been doing. And then you're going to create a chain. So I'm gonna go for, so you just, it doesn't matter how long you make it, but you just want to count your chain. Now, for on my previous one, I did chains like this. I actually don't want to tie a bow with them. I just want to tie a loose knot. And these ties were about 10 centimeters long. So I'm going to do about the same again, but I'm going to count my, count my chains this time. So what have we got? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Let's go to 20, 18, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Yeah, is that about 10 centimeters? Looks like it might be easily 10. Yeah, it's about 10. Let's actually go 22. So it doesn't matter how long your chain is, it's entirely up to you. Now, you're going to chain, whatever you've chained, you're going to chain four, two, three, and four. And excuse me one moment, Melba is at the door wanting to come in. Just one moment. Okay, so sorry about that. Melba just wanted to come in. Okay, so we've chained an extra four on top of our, our chain. So count to that fourth chain. So one, two, three, four. And then we're going to do a puff stitch into that fourth chain. So same as you were doing here, okay, for these puff stitches. So that's one, two, three, four. And for this one, I actually go for one extra five for this puff stitch. So it makes a nice little bauble on the end. And then you'll just do the same as before, get your hook through. And you've got one edge, one side of your of your little bauble. Okay, so you've got one half of your bauble. Now your slip stitch, and then chain another four, one, two, three, and four. And then you'll do the same into that fourth chain again. So whatever you just did, 
you'll do exactly the same. And that's why Melba needed to come in. She needed to go to the toilet. You can probably hear that in the background. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so we've done our other side of the bauble. Okay, so we're just going to close close this up by slip stitching back into that, that fourth chain, that first fourth chain, and making a slip stitch. Then just yarn over and pull through. Pull through a tail. Now leave a little bit of a tail because you want to use your tail here to tidy up your bauble. I mean yours might be perfect but I usually need to tidy mine up. So, so I'll just pull that tight and then I'll take my needle and once again this is why I've got a for this project I've got a kind of a sharper needle. So I want to make this nice bauble shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew, sew in the bottom here and just make it nice and round. So I'm, I'm basically I'm weaving in my tail but I'm also just sewing the base of this of this bauble. just to make it a bit more secure and also just make it a bit more uniformly round. So you do what you need to do there and then of course you'll just repeat the process for the second tie and then I just poke it through the top of the bauble and that's where I snip off my tail. So there's one done and then of course you'll you'll weave in this other tail end. So I'm going to go ahead and make my second tail. Um, and there's Melba playing with my button. So I'm going to go ahead and make my second knot tail, uh, tie, and uh, I'll meet you once I've done that. Okay and there's my finished Christmas bauble cat collar. <laughs> Melba is joining us. So I, this is just so pretty. I love it. Um, the colours don't show up on camera as pretty as they are in real life, unfortunately. But uh, I hope you enjoy this tutorial and uh, I'd love to see photos of, of how yours turned out, the colours that you used and, and how you finished this off. So please send your photos to catventurous.community at gmail.com. <laughs> Melva, or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. So um, happy holidays to you all and hope to see you soon. Thanks very much. Bye. Wine look. Hi everyone. <laughs> quick, quick one. Hi everyone and welcome to... <laughs>